Hey, what's up guys? In this video I want to show you how to replace the drum brake shoes and the wheel cylinder. I'm gonna do this on a Volkswagen T4, but the process can be similar for many other models which uses drum brake system on the back wheels. So after you remove the wheel, undo the 6mm hex which holds the rotor on the hub. Then disengage the handbrake and use a hammer to break loose the rotor. Once exposed, you can see in my situation the braking material got separated from the brake shoes because on the wheel cylinder one of the piston is blocked and therefore when braking all the friction got transferred only on one brake shoes. Then when the braking material got separated it began to push on the second braking material causing it to separate as well. This can block the wheel while driving or after you use the handbrake and you cannot use the car until you replace them. Here are a couple of tools I'm gonna use. I've got here a, a bunch of pliers, a mirror since I'm gonna work behind here. Now before you remove springs make sure that you have the other wheel still on so you can inspire in case you do something wrong or you just want to see the position of one of these springs. So I'm gonna start with the easy one, it can be removed by hand. Let's remove the top one as well, quite easy with a normal plier and I'm gonna place it on top over here. I've got here the side one. Next I'll remove the down spring. There we go. Now in order to move these pads towards me, I'm going to have to remove these two springs. So in order to remove these two, I'm gonna use this lockable plier in order to catch this top. Like so once I catch that thing, I can use this angle plier and press in the top and attempt to twist that nut and off it comes. You can see over here the system how it works. This thing goes inside through the hole and then once you twist it and the spring press this cover it locks in position and it keeps the pad on. As you can see now I can move this pad. So I'm gonna do the same with the next one. So I will push twist and luckily remove it. It really is the matter of how you catch this in order to not twist it together with the pin. Now since I'm going to remove the, the cylinder as well I'm not gonna be worried about scratching this rubber. I'm just gonna push this pad off on both sides. There we go. It will be easier for me to remove them. Down here there is one more spring. But in order to remove this spring, I'm gonna go first and remove these inside ones, which basically holds these pads together with a screwdriver over there, pry out the spring. I can remove as well this adjuster out of the way. There we go. I'm gonna go with the second spring, remove it as well. Now both pads are coming out. Another, I would say, quite difficult part is to remove this handbrake cable. I mean, to remove it it's easy, but to install it back is gonna be a nightmare. So, with a normal plier, you can just twist it like so. Make sure that it's in good condition. Mine looks good, it's not rusted or something. As you can see, the, the emergency brake or handbrake goes through this line, through the cabin. So this stays here. As you can see, I've got here exactly what I removed in relatively their position. Now behind the wheel over here, behind the cylinder, I'm gonna use a 12 mil for this bolt over here, which basically holds the cylinder. While I open this, I can watch from the, from the front if the bolt moves, and it does, so I'm not worried about that now. Next challenge is to remove this so for this one, it's a 7 millimeter. You can see some fluid is coming out. Off it comes, quite rusty, as you can see. You always have to replace this. Now for the brake line, I have more space. So I'm gonna use a 11 millimeter. I'm gonna place this little bag on the brake line. Now basically, the cylinder is ready to be removed. I have to hit it a little bit. Now since I remove all the rusty parts, 
I'm gonna give it a very good clean. Now it's time to install this new cylinder. Here is the place where the brake line will go. Before that, I'm going to place some copper paste. Then I'm gonna place some thread locker on this bolt. Insert it from behind. I will tighten it. I will use my mirror. Then I can take the brake line. I will first remove this one. I will tighten the brake line. Now since the cylinder is completely installed, I can place back this drain valve. I've got here the pad with the handbrake clip, which has to go this way for the cable to fit. I have to make more space over here. I'm gonna place first the back springs. It just goes in the hole, twist it with a screwdriver. Just hang in the thing. There we go. After I clean this adjuster, you can see there is this kind of fork which basically goes on the pad over here. If you see behind here, there is an indentation in the pad, that little hole over there is squared in order to make space for this arm and it stays in there it doesn't go up and down as you can see it doesn't move and on the second pad there is another indentation which goes on the adjuster I'm gonna place it on the piston so after i place the pin from behind I will just twist it and make sure that you have space to twist. There we go. Now let's continue with the rest of the springs. It just popped in there, like so. So the trick is to twist the screwdriver so that the spring will slide on the hole. large one on top and finally this little one on the side which goes in the hole over here and then up after the new shoes are on you can manually adjust them with a screwdriver from behind test the hand brakes and the brake pedal you can also see the self-adjust clamp engaging Finally bleed the brake lines by connecting a tube to the bleeding valve and press the pedal until all the air has come out. Meanwhile fill up the reservoir with brake fluid and keep it full while doing the bleeding process in order to avoid more air going into the lines. Alright guys that was it, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.